Welcome back class. Today we're going to really start diving into that the study of geometric proofs. As we've talked about earlier when we were doing our algebraic proofs, we're going to be using a two column format whereas in the in the first column we're going to be giving statements and in the second column we're going to be giving our reasons. So today we want to start talking a little bit more about those reasons. Uh, our reasons or our justifications can be in the form of definitions, properties, and theorems that we have learned in the past. Um, many of these are theorems that we might prove today or theorems that we have already proved and talked about. Um, when you're writing a proof, what you're trying to do is justify that uh, you're, you're answering the person's question why. You're giving the justification for why this particular argument is going to be true. There are three things that you do need to be, you know, keeping in mind when you're doing a proof. You do need to be aware and knowledgeable of the definitions that are related to what you're trying to prove. You're going to have some knowledge and understanding of some of the different postulates and theorems that we have learned in the past that you might be able to use. And of course, some of those basic rules of logic that we talked about earlier. Um, as we look at the examples, some of these examples, we're going to be looking at this diagram. In this diagram, we have um, lines A, C, E, G, and D, F all intersecting at point B. We've labeled several of the angles, angle 1, 2, 5, 6. Um, and what we're going to do is look at a variety of different statements that we might use at some time during our proof and what that justification for that statement would be. Remember that when we're justifying a statement, we have to be looking for properties, postulates, or definitions. So we'll need to know those properties, postulates, and definitions pretty well. A couple of quick examples here. Um, my statement could be if angle ABE is a right angle, then angle, then the measure of angle ABE is 90. So as we look at the diagram here, if ABE is a right angle, then we know it's 90 degrees. My rule there or my justification is that is the actual definition of a right angle. Um, another statement, if angle, sorry, if angle 2 is congruent to angle 1, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. So if I tell you, and we like to mark congruent angles using these little arcs, so if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and we also know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, then we can conclude that angle 2 is congruent to angle 5 as well. This is the transitive property. So again, we're looking for properties, um, postulates, or definitions. Okay. Example C, given that point B is the midpoint of AC, we want to be able to prove that AB is congruent to BC. So if we look back at our diagram, just to get a visual, we are, we, we're given that, or we know that point B is the midpoint of AC. We're trying to prove that AB is congruent to BC. Uh, our reason is the definition Again, definition of midpoint. The definition of midpoint, a midpoint says that if something, if a point is the midpoint, then it will divide it into two congruent segments. Okay? Example D. The measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle ABE will equal the measure of angle DBE. I'm going to erase some of what we have on this diagram so we can kind of focus in on those. So we're saying that the measure of angle 2, this one, plus the measure of angle ABE, ABE, will equal the measure of angle DBE. Here's DBE. And this is the angle addition postulate that we used in the previous examples or the previous lessons. And then our final example is... If we know that angle 1 is supplementary to angle FBG, then we know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle FBG is 180. And again, that's just the definition of supplementary angles, which simply says if two angles are supplementary, then they add up to 180 degrees. Um, we have learned all of these definitions and properties uh, and postulates in the past, and as the year goes on, we're going to be kind of adding on to our growing list of definitions, properties, and postulates that we will be able to use. I do want to mention that in the past we talked about the reflexive property, um, which talks about, you know, if, oops, excuse me, if angle A, if the measure of angle A is 
equal to the measure of angle A, so it's equal to itself. Or the symmetric property, that would be the one that might say if the, me the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B, that we could flip it around and say the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle A. That was a symmetric property. And the transitive property we actually saw just right here. All three of these can be used for equality as well as congruence. So if I said that angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B is congruent to angle A. And this would be a symmetric property of congruence in this case. Okay, one thing to point out when we are talking about equality, we need to refer to the measures, the actual numerical values. When we're talking about congruence, we're talking about the angles themselves. So we're going to look at some examples here, okay? Same diagram again, but some different statements this time. And remember, the key is the justification. When we're justifying, we need to name a property, a postulate, or a definition that would, that would prove or justify that statement. So our first one is that EB plus BG equals EF. So EB plus BG equals EG. Oops, sorry. Erase that. Try that one more time. So EB plus BG equals EG. And this was that postulate that allowed us to add segments together. We called this one the segment addition postulate. Uh, another one, if angle, uh, I'm sorry, five is congruent to angle six. So again, look back at our diagram. If angle five is congruent to angle six, then BF, this ray, must bisect EBC. Well, that would be the definition of angle bisector because the definition of an angle bisector says that if a, if a ray bisects an angle, then it will divide it into two congruent angles. Okay, if the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle six equals 90, so if I knew that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle six equals 90, then angle one is complementary to angle six. Now, sometimes when people see this one, they see that 90 degrees and they think, oh, definition of a right angle, because right angles are 90 degrees. But in this one, it's actually talking about adding two angles together to get 90 degrees. This is a definition, but it's the definition of complementary angles. And the definition of complementary angles is that it is simply two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Keep in mind, in complementary angles, these angles do not need to be adjacent. Okay. Um, another example here, if the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 5 so the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle five equals the measure of angle six plus the measure of angle five, then the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle six. This actually goes way back to when we did some of our algebraic proofs. A lot of those um, theorems and, and definitions and, and things that we used when we did our algebraic proofs can be used in geometry as well. If you compare these two, these two sentences, um, the first sentence says measure of angle one plus measure of angle five equals measure of angle six plus measure of angle five. The second sentence has only measure of angle one equals measure of angle six. So what you need to ask yourself is, well, where did the measure of angle five go? The measure of angle five had to have been subtracted from each side. And by subtracting from each side, we were left with that second statement. So this is actually the subtraction rule of equality because we subtracted a value, in this case, the measure of angle five from each side. Given that AC is perpendicular to EF, remember that symbol is the symbol for perpendicular lines. So what we know is that AC and EF are perpendicular, so we're concluding that ABC is a right angle. Well, that would have to be the definition of perpendicular lines. 
And the definition of perpendicular line states that if two lines um, are perpendicular, then they do form right angles. Okay. Just a few other quick things to, to think about before we have you try a few of these on your own. Number one, explain why the following statement does not need to be justified. The midpoint of a segment is a point on the segment that divides it into two congruent segments. The reason that we don't need to justify this is because this is already the definition of midpoint. And we use definitions to actually justify other statements. So if it's already a definition, it means that it's already been proven and we don't need to provide any further justification. Given that RS and ST share endpoint S, based on this information, Michaela says that the segment addition postulate justifies the statement that RS plus ST equals RT. Is there a flaw in Michaela's reasoning? Is she correct? If the diagram was drawn as RS and ST, where they share this endpoint S, then I would say that Michaela's uh, segment addition postulate is, justif is justified. However, since we don't know how these segments are actually connected to each other, for all we know, RS and ST with, could be connected like this. Well, the segment RT is no longer the combination of RS plus ST. So in that case, we could not use segment addition postulate to justify that. And in part three, as part of your homework, try to think of a couple of different statements that we could justify from this picture. So you want to come up with a statement and then give a justification for that statement that you've come up with. Now, I want to point out this math tip as well. We often look at pictures in, in, in geometry and we, we want to make sure that you are not making assumptions about what is in the picture. Um, assuming a 90 degree angle is probably one of the biggest assumptions people tend to make because the angle might look like it's a right angle. You can only conclude that an angle is a right angle if you are given the information in the problem. So if I come right out and state, this is a right angle. Or if in the diagram, if you are given the right angle symbol, then you can conclude it's a right angle. So for example, here is that right angle symbol. Or three, if it's somewhere in your proof, if you have already proved that the angle is a right angle, then you can continue to use that in your future statements.